Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And to all of my returning OGs, what's up, y'all? So welcome to February 2020, yeah? A very, very happy birthday to all my Aquarians out there. And I also want to wish a happy birthday to the February Pisceans. We will be moving into your season next, yes? So um, with that said, I do want to mention, first of all, I want to say that this is the intro and you will find a, um, a timestamp pinned in the comments section that will get you straight to the reading. So if you're watching multiple readings and you don't want to listen to the intro over and over again, you can use that timestamp. I do recommend, however, that everybody listen to the intro at least once because there is some information that you may really need or may be privy to, may want to be privy to, that you would miss had you not listened to the intro. Yeah. So with this being Aquarius season, I do want to mention that the reading for Aquarius could very well be a collective energy, a collective reading. However, it is intended to be for those who are looking for guidance guidance for the sign of Aquarius because we are in that season. I do feel like this could be a reading for you generally. So maybe you might want to watch that reading just to see how it applies to you and what it could mean for your life moving through Aquarius season, just like I did with Capricorn last month, um, even though I did mention that maybe I wanted to do a separate reading so that your readings don't get hijacked with collective energy. Hi <laughs> um, it didn't necessarily happen that way this month. I'll see. Um, but if you guys if you guys find that you know you might want an actual reading please let me know for the month of, or for the season that we're moving in i would love to know i'd love to hear that from you yeah um okay so these these readings are general and they are timeless so because they're general readings um you know just take what resonates everything is not going to resonate for everyone and this may not even be the reason for you if if you're hearing listening to this and it's just not fitting it's not making sense then please don't try and fit anything into your life that doesn't belong there naturally okay and also keep in mind that this is a general reading i'm channeling for thousands of people so um you know not everything is going to necessarily resonate with you all the time okay so just keep that in mind also these readings are timeless so just because it is dated for the month of february and i'm channeling energies for the messages for the month of february for you it doesn't mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you during the month of february this could be messages that come forward to you that spirit wants you to know at this time but it's not something that doesn't actually manifest or happen for some time down the road okay so just keep that in mind i am available for private readings all the information is found in the description box below this video um, you can also find me on uh, social media. I'm on Facebook at Divine Conversations 2711. I'm also on Instagram at Divine underscore Conversations. I do welcome you to reach out to me there. However, if you are looking to book a personal reading, I do not recommend that you use Facebook. Um, I don't even really recommend that you use Instagram. However, Instagram is a more viable option. I am able to get to the messages more quickly, but my dm situation is just full of all kinds of messages so there's still a possibility that i might miss your inquiry and with that said even if you were to say to reach out on instagram for a personal reading i'm still going to defer you back to email so if you would like to get a personal reading with me check the description box below my email can be found there along with all of the readings that i offer their description and their prices and then email me directly. My email address is divineconversations2711 at gmail.com. But again, that can be found in the description box. Again, I am going to, even if you were to reach out on Instagram, I am still going to defer to your email address because I would at least need your email address to send you an invoice for the reading. So you're better off just skipping a step and emailing me, emailing me directly and I'll get you set up for a personal reading. Yeah? Cool. So the Oracle deck that we're using for this month is the Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. I really, really enjoyed using this this um, this deck this month. Um, it was a deck that was provided by a viewer. Thank you so much for sending this in. I really appreciate it. For those of you that are interested in donating Oracle decks or Tarot decks that you would like to see used on the channel, I do have a PO box that the information for that can be found in the description box as well. Um, if you are going to send a tarot or oracle deck, you might just want to email me really quick and really and check in to see if I have that deck yet, um, so that you know we're not you're not kind of wasting money sending a repeat deck. Okay, um, but the one thing I want to say about this deck is that 
uh, of this Oracle deck is that the author speaks in first person kind of often. So just keep that in mind when I'm saying, when I'm reading through the, the, the definition on the, in the book and I'm speaking, I'm saying things like I, it's coming from the perspective of the author herself. Okay. It's not me speaking personally. It's the author and her narrative. It's sometimes it's in the first person, but it's great. I mean, it still worked really well. The messages were beautiful for that. So I'm excited to, for you to guys, for you guys to see them. And for those of you that are new to the channel and are wondering, I'm not the type of reader that's looking into the situation to be nosy. My intention with these readings here is to bring forward the best messages for you that you need to hear at this time so that you can make a better decision for your life moving forward so that you can have a greater opportunity to be more discerning for your life and for the where you want to go and potentially what could be coming on down the pipeline for you. If at any moment you find that the, something is resonating with you and you don't quite like the way that sounds, you don't want to continue manifesting with that or manifesting that, you have the opportunity to change that manifestation by changing your thought process, then changing your beliefs and changing your alignment to the situation, okay? So just keep in mind, for those of you that are here trying to snoop, trying to get into people's minds, thinking that I'm trying to get into somebody's head, I'm not your guy, all right? There are plenty of people that are out here that may be doing that, but I'm not here for that. Also understand that I do not base my channelings on love specifically. If love comes out, then love comes out. I am not resistant to that. However, if you're looking for specific love readings, then this is probably not the, the channel for you. I do have moments where I will do uh, you know, a love live session here or there, but ultimately the focus of my channel or the focus of Divine Conversation is to bring you greater guidance and understanding about, well, to bring you greater guidance, of, or, I'm sorry, <laughs> to bring you greater understanding about what is going on in your life, the energies that are surrounding you, and then bringing you guidance in, in terms of handling those energies and making the best decisions for yourselves. Yes? Okay, I believe that's it. So without further ado, let's get to it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Mwah. Hello, Aries. Welcome to your reading for February 2020. Thank you so much for tuning in. So let's dive right in here. We have in your pre-shuffle, we have the Eight of Cups with Temperance. And then at the bottom of the deck, you have overall energy for this pre-shuffle here. You have the Five of Pentacles. So what I'm getting with this, Aries, is you are leaving some sort of long-standing situation or situationship behind. Um, and it's you're, you're, you're walking away from a certain point of view or a certain way of being or a certain stance that you held on something or something. And it's all in service of the fact that there is a greater sense of balance and harmony within you. And it seems like whatever you whatever you're walking away from, whatever you're leaving behind here, it stemmed from a sense of inadequacy not being good enough or that per or them not being good enough or the situation or circumstance not being good enough um yeah it came from a sense of lack but now that you've reached this stronger or deeper sense of alchemy or balance or harmony or union even within you're able to walk away from some i'm feeling that really is some sort of insecurity and maybe some sort of walls that you've built up around yourself in the name of or in, in, in because of these certain insecurities that you held um anything it, it, walls circumstances people that you still hung out with or maybe a certain type of person that you still dated or this could even be a situation in which you're walking away from some long-standing opinion that you've held about something or someone because you have reached a greater sense of balance and harmony within yourself, a greater sense of union, okay? This feels really good, Aries. I'm not going to lie. It feels great. It, it's probably a little challenging. It's probably a little daunting. It's probably something that, you know, y y you might <laughs> you might be losing a little bit of sleep over, but it's nothing major. It's really definitely nothing bad. I mean, in, in any circumstance, you walking away from some sort of, you know, long-standing conformity that, that was uh, developed through a sense of insecurity, that's a good thing no matter what, no matter what the outcome, that's ultimately a good thing, leaving insecurities behind, you know what I mean? All right, Aries, I'm gonna give this one shuffle. And then we'll see what we've got for the month of February. Here we go. Ha! 
Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Arians, sun, moon, rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of February 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Aries. Um, I'm going to give this three shuffles for you. I'm being instructed to do three shuffles here for you. But I want to say that your energy, I'm getting a lot of purple energy. So there's a lot of divine wisdom or maybe even higher understanding that is allowing you to make this shift, to, make, to, to, to move away in some way in your life here. A higher perspective is giving you the ability to walk away from things that you've been holding on to too strongly, too tightly for dear life in some way. All right. Three shuffles. Here we go. For my Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of January 2020. This is two. For my Aries. All right. And last but not least, we have three for my Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of February 2020. Let's get it, y'all. Okay. Overall energy here, Aries. You have the Ace of Swords. Well, well, well. That is quite poignant, I will say. Um, and also, something that I'm picking up on here, for some of you, this could be a situation in which you are maybe, and it's funny that I, I, I heard this in a reading today that I was watching for my own self, and it wasn't for Aries. Um, I think it was for Taurus, but because I'm, I'm in Western astrology and my sun sign is a Taurus, but it was like, maybe it may not be Taurus. It might be, I don't remember what it was, but it was, but the reader was talking about how someone could be breaking their own rules or, or changing the way that, you know, like by changing the way that they, they deal with something because they've reached a new, a higher understanding. And that's a little bit of the energy that I'm feeling here for you, Aries, especially with this Ace of Swords. This is an energy of what I'm getting here is really strongly is an energy of you coming you coming to terms with some truth about something or an awareness about something. Ace of Swords. Underneath that is the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, so you're moving slowly. You're moving forward quite slowly, but surely and methodically in terms of whatever this truth is. This could be uh, this could be a communication that you give, like that you send out. This could be communication that comes in from you or it comes in to you from someone else or an external source. Um, and there's movement in terms of that. This could just be an awareness for you, Aries, and that you're moving forward methodically, slowly but surely with that. Underneath the Knight of Pentacles, you have the Seven of Pentacles. And with the Seven of Pentacles, I'm hearing Harvest. Something may have really come into fruition for you, Aries, especially with uh, this Ace of Swords energy here. That Ace of Swords could be, the, you know, what you're using to cut the fruit or cut the vines or, or you know, cut the, the vegetables or the, to, to actually take your harvest here. Underneath the Seven of Pentacles, oh, damn, is the Five of Pentacles again. Interesting. So here, I, what I really feel like Aries is yes, you are in a little bit of a you're you're in quite a bit actually of a harvest phase for you right now, and you, <laughs> this might seem really weird, but any of your insecurities or whatnot, whatever, any feelings of lack from the past, those were seeds that have given that have borne this fruit that you can now take with you and move on to the next. And that fruit is knowledge. That fruit is wisdom and understanding here, okay? And in this situation for you, Aries, <clears throat> this may have been a really slow and arduous process. This may have been something that really took you a great deal of time to get to, to come to some sort of relation, uh, 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 realization of... But now you're harvesting. And I'm hearing like the truth will set you free. This is, this is really great, Aries. Okay, cool. So let's um, 
let's get into the rest of your reading here. We can, we're going to do first half, second half of your reading. You could look at this as the first half, second half of your month. Take it however it resonates, yeah? First set of surrounding energies for you, Aries. In the first half of your reading, you have the Queen of Pentacles. I just heard, now I'm ready to start over. You have this sense of groundedness, security, autonomy, and independence. There's also an energy of unconditional love. <clears throat> also knowing what it is that you're knowing your worth. So also with growing through whatever experiences or lessons were directly connected to this sense of insecurity or or lack uh, uh whatnot, whatever that was representative of the the five of pentacles, you have grown out of that and you've come into this sense of autonomy and clarity about who you are and what it is that you want. And holding your space for that, holding your own in terms of that, and knowing what it is you're worthy of, truly knowing your worth. The Queen of Pentacles is definitely an energy of, of an individual knowing their worth and not giving any, not allowing themselves to receive anything less than what they're worthy of or less than what they know that they're worthy of. Dignity also is a word that comes to mind with the Queen of Pentacles here. Queen of Pentacles is coupled with the Five of Cups. But all is not lost here. And, and again, I'm still I'm still getting an energy of, especially because these fives, a five is a number of change and transformation. I just feel like literally what I'm getting with this, Aries, is the tears that you have cried, the emotions that have spilled over in however long this process is or was for you and whatever it encompassed for you um, has watered you to the state of being able to harvest something brand new. It's helped to develop you into this queen of pentacles, this self-sufficient, secure, honest, and humble energy. Now, we're not talking gender here. We're just talking energy, okay? And so the queen of pentacles is definitely an energy of saving herself for only that which she knows she is truly worthy of, okay? At least in this circumstance, that's what I'm picking up on. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aries, in the first half of your reading, you have justice. I heard Libra, so I'm going to throw that out there. Maybe you could be dealing with a Libra or maybe you have Libra in your chart, but justice is being served here. Balance, or scales are being balanced. Integrity is high, is what I'm hearing. Okay. I, I just get, Aries, I get a strong sense that you have really learned some valuable lessons through dealing with and handling the insecurities that you may have experienced or held on to in the past. And now that you are growing out of it, now that all of that has spilled away with this Five of Cups here, you're left with the Two of Cups, which is that ultimate balance, you could say, between masculine and feminine within you, potentially. But also this Five of Cups is saying that all is not lost. But whatever it is you are left with here, that has, after everything has spilled out, is harmonious is what i want to say is is in balance is is in balance is the right thing for you justice is coupled with ooh the emperor interesting so here we do have that balance between masculine and feminine energy and for some of you specifically i am feeling like your what you needed to do was to uh, work with your feminine energy and work on healing that and healing those insecurities and knowing what it is that you're worth Sorry, let's let that go by. But knowing what it is that you're worth and not and standing your ground and not accepting anything less for yourself, which has now allowed you to stand in this emperor energy. Well, actually, this is you, Aries. Perfect. And actually, what I was getting with the emperor that when that's when this came out was this was like you in a whole and balanced state. Ultimately, the emperor does represent the, the masculine or the divine masculine energies where the, the feminine is represented by the empress. But because this is your card, Aries, it makes sense to me now why when I, the first thing I felt when this emperor came out was you just standing tall, standing firm, standing in your wholeness. I was just getting a complete package from this emperor energy, but that is the justice that this is bringing into your life. Now, for some of you also, your justice could be the alignment or the attraction of a divine masculine counterpart. 
that is just for a select number of you. It's something that, that I picked up on, so I'm just going to put it out there because this is a general reading, okay? But ultimately, this is a very good energy for you, Aries. Yeah? <laughs> okay, I laughed because my phone just went off and it was like like confirming. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so your challenge, Aries, in the first half of your reading here, you have the Ten of Pentacles. Interesting. Well, completing the lesson, and I guess maybe it's the final essay, the final exam, maybe. Um, what I'm hearing with this is completing the lesson putting old circumstances to rest. And this also could be an energy of maybe you're just really anxious and eager to move forward, but there are still some things that need to be wrapped up right now. Like, like your completion of this course, or in other words, this life lesson is inevitable. Like you're almost there, but there are still a, there's still a little more of a, maybe like a prerequisite or something that you're going to need to handle or close out before you can be completely done with this lesson and move on to the next thing but it's on the horizon it's there you're like about it's like i want to say you're like about 95 percent done with this there's just it's like this is the home stretch ten of pentacles is coupled with the magician okay Okay, so then also what I'm getting with this is now that you have completed this life lesson, your challenge is to say, all right, where do I go from here? So this 90, so you being at this 95% completion, this last 5% is you now getting in the mode of setting yourself up or planning for the next steps that you want to take. So like, let's use from going from high school to college, right? So now you're in senior year of college. I'm sorry, you're in senior year of high school and you're about to go to college. Some of you may need to decide which college you want to go to. Others of you, well, shit. I mean, if you're a senior in high school and you're still applying to schools, well, no, that's when you do it, right? Why do I feel, for, for, some, for a reason, I, for, a, for, um, for some reason, I felt like a lot of that also kind of takes place junior year, maybe, like maybe the very end of junior year is when, but that's when you're starting to gear up and start to write your essays and blah, 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 or, and whatnot, whatever. And then applying really happens in senior year. Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. This is just a freaking hypothetical. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying, right? This is that planning process for the next phase in your life. Okay. Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Aries, you have judgment there you go you're rising above you're moving on to the next cycle this is um the ascension this is you being called to the next phase in your life this is you being awoken this is you being cleansed and cleared it's like you're going through the the, the, the cleaning or the cleansing process to purify you before you move on to the next cycle in your life beautiful aries uh, the, uh judgment is coupled with temperance Wow. Yeah. So this, you, you, I'm going to be honest with you, Aries. You know what? This, this really feels like to me, you're going through like the final, the final wash to cleanse you of any old energies and whatnot that is going to lead you into this next circumstance or this next phase in your life. This is beautiful. Really beautiful. Okay, so moving on to the second half of your reading here, Aries. First set of surrounding energies you got. Ooh, the Six of Cups. And the first thing I heard was a soulmate connection. You know, Aries, you could be in a process right now of work. And this is literally what I just said earlier with the just with justice and the and the emperor here. You could be in the process of getting ready to really truly align with you with a divine counterpart. Now, technically, this would be most likely be the feminine aligning with the, the masculine here. And that kind of makes sense because, you know, most of the people that watch these readings and even my, my channel specifically or personally are, are women or feminine energies. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now, if you're a masculine out there, um, you can kind of see that you're, I mean, I kind of feel like you're already in this alignment and now the feminine, in some, in some cases, the feminine is, is like kind of catching up here. 
I don't take it as it resonates, guys. Take it with a grain of salt. I don't know, but it could. It doesn't have to be that the ma- or or masculine. You could be in the process of aligning with this too, and so the feminine here is doing her own work, which is then a- a- affecting the masculine or influencing the masculine to do his own work, and thus you two are aligning with each other. Now, also keep in mind when I say feminine or masculine, it does not have to mean gender. We're talking about energy here. So you, like me, could be a physical male that resonates more with or identifies more as the feminine energy or the feminine counterpart in a romantic situation, okay? So take it as it resonates, yes? But the Six of Cups is a soulmate situation. It's a soulmate relationship. That's literally what I heard when the card came out. So I'm going to go with that. It could very well be someone from your past, that is coming into alignment with you. You two are coming into alignment together here, okay? Six of Cups is coupled with <laughs> the Nine of Cups. There you go. Satisfaction, wish fulfillment, something that maybe you've been yearning for or working towards very for a very long time is going to be returning. Oh my God. Is going to be returning into your life. I, um... <laughs> wow. I just... I, I just recognize something that's pretty personal, which is kind of cool, which I, I, I'm not going to talk about it, but it's really kind of awesome. But yeah, that's what I'm getting here. It's so there, there, it's either this could be this could be a romantic partnership. It could be a soulmate situation. I am going to lead with that because that's the first thing that I heard when, when the card came out. But keeping in, in line with this being a general reading, this could be anything from your past or maybe even your childhood. This could be a desire of yours from ha from childhood or whatnot, whatever, that you're now realigning with and thus... You're getting some sort of satisfaction here. Um, but this, all, yes, this also could be a soulmate partnership and someone that is coming that like a past soulmate. I mean, you could go so far to say as if it's someone that's brand new to your life, then it, that it potentially or most likely is uh, a past or parallel life soulmate or partner. But also it could physically be someone from your actual past in this lifetime. Okay. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aries. In the second half of your reading, you have, ooh, the Queen of Swords. More Libra energy, and it's actually in the same spot as Justice. Uh, discernment. Discernment is getting what, getting you what it is that you want. And what I'm getting with this, Aries, is that there is a need for you to be as absolutely discerning as possible, like not putting up with any bullshit, not from anyone, and specifically, not even from yourself in order or in an effort to keep yourself in alignment with what it is you truly desire. And that's going to be a tough one for some of you out there. Because it's like you're good at policing others, but when it comes to policing yourself, you're kind of maybe a little bit lax on that. And you can't, you can't do that. You have to hold yourself to the same standards that you hold everyone else. You know what I mean? Like you have to walk your talk. You can't get mad at someone for doing one thing that like you don't necessarily agree with, but then either turn around and do the exact same thing or something to the equivalent. You know what I mean? Like that's, if you really want to stay in alignment with what this is for you, then you are truly going to have to walk the talk 100% at all times. And that's the energy that I'm getting from this Queen of Swords here, okay? Queen of Swords is coupled with, oof. The king of a pentacles. Yes, honey. So look, this is the, there is the there is the king to your queen. There is the king to your queen. And and again, Aries, what I'm getting here is if you truly want, if you truly to desire to be with this masculine counterpart, with this king to your queen, then you have got to set the record straight. You have got to set the example. You have got to lay down the law. You've got to draw the line in the sand between you and anyone else that is not this individual. And if there are any individuals in your life that you know do not line up to what your ideal uh circumstance is in terms of what you want in a partner or even like a romantic relationship, then you have got to set yourself free from it. Because you entertaining anyone else other than someone that would adequately fit that bill is literally someone that is just taking up that space. You have to be okay with not having that space be taken up by anyone for some time. You can't say you want... Um, you can't say you want the emperor 
right? You can't say that you want the emperor, but then entertain the king of pentacles, which is like a lesser version of that emperor. You know what I mean? You, if, if you want the emperor, then you have to hold space for the emperor and not let that space be taken until the emperor comes forward. No placeholders. No placeholders here, okay? Now, keep in mind that I was using the King of Pentacles as, a, as, as a, an example. I am, I am seeing the King of Pentacles as the king to your Queen of Pentacles and vice versa, okay? So what this really is, is the Queen of Swords saying, no one can occupy this space other than my shit, other than my divine masculine, other than my twin, other than my ideal partner, my ideal mate, either than, other than someone that truly fits that bill. And I'm hearing no compromises. No settling here, right? Okay, your challenge, Aries, in the second half of your reading, you have the Nine of Wands. Perseverance, y'all. Okay, and what, I'm, what I heard with that was, suck it up. But that might be you, Aries. <laughs> that might be you telling yourself that, look, just suck it up and do it already. That is a very Aries-type energy, a very Aries-type mindset here. But your challenge is to persevere. Now, this challenge is specifically for those of you that are having trouble remaining on, excuse me, remaining on your own until you find that ideal partner. You might be a serial dater. This kind of feels like an energy of someone that is just is afraid to be alone. But if you're afraid to be alone, then you're in a codependent and toxic energy. And that's exactly what is keeping you from actually aligning with this divine counterpart or at least a true version of what it is you truly desire out of a mate, a husband, a wife even. You're going to have to stick it out. If you really truly want to have this soulmate type energy in your life, whether it's someone that you're currently aware of or someone that is that you may have not even met yet, if you really truly want that in your life, then you are going to have to do everything that it takes to get there or to or to, to draw that in towards you. And that means keeping the space open and not allowing anyone else to take that space that does not fit that bill. Nine of Wands is coupled with the Eight of Cups. You've got to leave everything that is superfluous behind. You have got to leave, I mean, no more just sitting here with these eight cups, just partying along with the rest of the people, hoping that you'll find that two of cups to complete your 10, knowing damn well you're not going to find that two of cups in the current environment. A current environment full of fuckboys and fuckgirls and partiers and, and space fillers and, and, and narcissists and... and, 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 and <laughs> Wow. And I heard psychopaths. Okay. I mean, whatever. This is a general reading. So take it as it resonates. But you know, for whomever this is resonating for, you know that where you are standing is not the complete 10. And you know you're not going to get the complete 10 by continuing to stand here. So you've got to move away from it. In anything, this could be career. This could be romance. This could be friendships. This could be anything, Aries. Okay. So just take it as it resonates here. Closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, you have the Four of Pentacles. And, uh, this could be one of two things, Aries. This can either be you needing to let go or you needing to hunker down and hold your own. And not open up to anyone that would do you wrong, that would treat you unfairly, that would treat you poorly, that would give you anything less than what you know you deserve, want, and need out of a partnership, whether that be romantic or business, whatever. That's really, that's the strongest thing that I'm getting here for you, Aries. This Four of Pentacles is holding your space, holding your center, holding what it is that you believe in, and not relinquishing anything until the right circumstances come about. There, it, this, this even could be a little bit of FOMO, fear of missing out, that has led you to kind of like, you know, engage in something that is less than what you're worthy of, really. Four of Pentacles is coupled with the Three of Wands. Perf I mean, so what this is saying here, guys, is hold your space Hold your center, hold on to what you believe in, hold on to what it is you want as you travel down this path. Don't 
let go. Don't open up until that ship comes in. If it's a specific person, okay, it's a specific person, but it doesn't have to be a specific person. What it really should, I think what you what would be best for you to hold on to is are the principles. What it is you truly desire in a business partner or in a business situation or in a job or or in a romantic partnership. And again, not opening the floodgates, not opening up, not letting any other ship in other than the one that fits the bill, regardless if it's that specific person or not. Okay. All right, Aries. This is good. This is very good. And it could very well be the sense of insecurities here with that five of pentacles that has put you in that space of not wanting to be alone or you know not wanting to let go of certain circumstances or situations that maybe help you to feel good but ultimately that are draining you or aren't or or at least aren't serving your highest good and is taking up the space of something that really could be coming into your life that could be of greater service to you okay all right so let's get your oracle guidance now Aries. see that didn't work so well I have trouble shuffling this deck. It's weird. Like, the first half of the deck will shuffle, and then the top few cards, like, won't do it. I'm just, I'm just not doing it right. That's all. <laughs> okay, Aries. I'm gonna give this two more shuffles for you, and then we'll see what we've got here. For your oracle guidance for the month of February 2020. This, at this message of needing to walk away from some things, Aries, is, is pivotal. It's key. It's like, and I just recognized, I just remembered, that came out in the pre-shuffle. Mm hmm Okay. And also, I mean, this is something that I did kind of say, but I didn't say it in these words, so I'm going to say it this way because it just came through to me. But this Nine of Wands and the Eight of Cups, the Nine of, Wand Nine of Wands can either be you needing to have the energy to persevere in terms of getting what it is that you truly want, or the Nine of Wands could be you being in re super resistant even ref in refusal to let certain elements or aspects go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, let's get your oracle guidance here. For my Aries. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of February 2020. Aries. Oracle guidance, please, Spirit. For the month of... January 2020, not January, I'm so sorry, February, Aries for the month of February 2020. There it is right there. Card number 23, which boils down to yet another five, ladies and gentlemen. Last quarter moon, gratitude. Hmm, okay. Okay, here we go. Gratitude. Be where you are and be thankful. There is always something to be grateful for, no matter your suffering. Gratitude raises a lower vibration to a higher one. Do not allow yourself to be surrounded by too many negative people. Life is conspiring for you. The quote here says, I joyfully turn my attention to what I am grateful for. As we enter the last quarter moon on the lunar cycle, the energies begin to turn towards surrender and release. To let go of what long, no longer is needed, it behooves us to pay attention to what we might right now, I'm sorry, to what we might have right now, both positive and negative. This attention, paying, and focus allows us to wisely discern and, be, and to be grateful for all of it. Yes, all of it. Because the nasty stuff the stuff that is making us suffer right now, it already happened and we can take wisdom from this. However, now is going, oh sorry, however, now it's going and what you we have left is the good stuff. And frankly, most of it is going to be great. Taking some time out on this moon to list a few things you feel grateful for will raise your vibrations and banish any resistance you have to ditching outmoded patterns. Doing this also turns your powerful focus away from a story you may have started to believe of 
everything going wrong or that life does terrible things to you. Gratitude is a balancer. In fact, it normally tips the scales to the positive. The companion stone or metal for this card or this moon cycle, I guess, is ocean jasper. So if you feel drawn to working with ocean jasper, I highly recommend that you do so. But with that said, Aries, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a fantastic month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!